go. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Hi guys and welcome back to our channel and today another Take Tuesday with a Land Rover of course. Uh, for those of you out there who has one, it's a 4.4 and uh, it's a V8 in this case, gasoline of course. And um, there are sometimes this thing can create a little bit of problems and this time it's a little different. My problem with Land Rover this time is that it shows low coolant level every time you turn it on or every time you turn it off. However, it is not a low cooling level. It's actually completely filled out out there and here is how to take care of that problem. Before we get started, uh, please like and subscribe to the videos. That'd be nice. You'll help a lot of people out, including myself. And uh, here is the problem. We're in the car right now and I'm gonna put in the uh, ignition and you'll see what happens. It's gonna check a lot of things, but from there on, it'll cover a low cooling level. Here we go. Goes for the system checks, as you can see, as normal. I got the bonnet open, which is fine. And there you go, low coolant level. Now, if we go out and have a look outside, you'll see that actually it's completely full. And um, there is absolutely nothing wrong with the coolant level, except that the uh, indicator or basically the sensor inside the coolant tank is actually faulty. Now, it's a small buoy that, go, a buoy that goes up and down and it over time loses the buoyancy and that means the 50-50 coolant you have in uh, is going to make this thing sink. So as it gets heavier and it does, and is losing its buoyancy, it's going to come down and then it will always indicate low coolant level. However, if you drive with it for a while, you'll never know when you actually have a low coolant level. So it's a good idea to change it. I just ordered a new tank coming from uh, Amazon and it costs about 50 some dollars and that's basically it. And that's also including the uh, sensor. It's slightly modified compared to the other one that is on the car from original. However, it should be of a good plastic and everything else. So uh, let's go ahead and have a look how that uh, looks like. So here we are on the ending compartment and uh, this is basically what we need to change. This is where your problem is. As you can see, I still have coolant in it and we're gonna start from uh, the top and in at the bottom. Here we are down the bottom. You can see on both sides where your coolant is supposed to be, actually right down there. Can be hard to see, but that's where you'll find it. And as you can see here, I got plenty of coolant in the system and yet I still have a uh, low coolant level inside the um, instrument panel. The the thing you cannot do, I thought you could maybe go ahead and change this or whatever, but since it's losing its buoyancy, where's the uh, sensor located? Well, here is the new one. I just bought that. Actually, I bought it from Amazon, and uh, it's slightly different than the one that's in there. Uh, however, it should be very, very strong, and it should be modified to the better. That's what I've heard, so let's go ahead and put that on. You got the bleed valve here in the top, and um, you also got the, right here, you can see that this is where the cold fill. Uh, the range and then down here in the bottom right here that's your sensor and that's the one you cannot see in the one that's actually installed right now but the flotation device that's inside of here that's the one that loses the buoyancy and that's why it gives you a false indication in the instrument panel so uh, there's only one way out and that is to go ahead and minimize your uh, spill or even you can pump it out if you want and then you can change your um, your tank and then we should be ready again so how do we do that let's get started To make sure we don't have enough uh, or have a lot of spillage down in the uh, on the floor, I'm using a pair of wise grips, and basically it's the lower connection of the coolant down there, which is also this one up here, as you can see right there. That's the same thing. Uh, where that's attached, all this is gonna fall out, of course. So you want to save as much as you can. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the wise grip on top of the hose up here and squeeze it slightly. Don't squeeze it hard, so you make holes in it or damage it. But then I'm gonna pull it off. Uh, right here as you can see and then I'm going to swap the uh, tanks around.
So as you can see, I just played the system uh, very, very similar to whatever I could blow up myself. It's just sugar water glycol, nothing wrong with it, just don't eat it, uh, never a good idea. Make sure these clamps are all set on correctly, same thing down the bottom, and make sure you don't forget to put on your um, your sensor as well, the sensor block. Uh, the breathing system, we can do it here, and right now, I just verified that I actually have um, f a coolant fluid up here as well. So that's why I put some pressure here first and then open up here to make sure I have uh, complete coolant in the whole system. Fill it up to the cold level down here. Remember you only work on these engines when they're cold when you're dealing with this because otherwise you will scold yourself and you will get in trouble. And um, now it's just a matter of going out to try it out. So uh, let's go ahead and assemble the last part. So before you go driving and test driving, you see I'm still missing a part here on the top, but that's on purpose. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and finish that up when I come back. But before you start this thing up and go out and try it out, um, always do an inventory check first to make sure you have all your tools and everything else that could have been fallen in here somewhere. Uh, make sure that you got all that stuff sorted out and taken out of the engine compartment first. So we're out driving just to check that everything is working. Uh, the car is running just fine. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. So this completes the uh, test basically. Oh, sorry, it dropped there. Uh, but it completes the test basically on the change of the expansion container for the uh, cooling system. So um, if you like the video, uh, then like, subscribe, and that'll uh, make me happy, a lot of people happy. It's time to time to leave, and I hope you have some fun with it. It's not that difficult to change, but it does take care of the uh, low cooling level that you get in your dashboard, and uh, then you should be working for the next many years forward as well. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed it, I did, and um, hopefully see you soon next time. Until then, bye-bye. Uh, there he is, Mr. Sobo. Brad, this one's for you. Right. <laughs> one, two.